when we're self-protective, we don't really see what God is doing. I don't really trust anyone around me. And so this community thing is beautiful because it's like, when I'm vulnerable, I'm pulled into a space where I actually am in, in able to share my heart and love with someone else and be received by a family, by friends, by a community. Um, and so again, this protects me from, um, yeah, being self-reliant and being closed in on myself. So I just think this is vital, guys, like being vulnerable. And what Jesus does, every part of Jesus's journey, when, when we can read the scriptures, when, and particularly on the cross, the cross was the most vulnerable place for Jesus radically transparent, radically open to the Father so the Father could provide. Poco a poco vamos a llegar Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are We make our way hey, hey. Welcome everybody. <laughs> Father Angelus here. <laughs> taking control. <laughs> who are you? The Fa- bald Father, Luke, Father I, Angel's his brother. I'm Father Angel's his brother who didn't make the basketball team. Whoa. <laughs> 12. Whoa. My name is Father Innocent. <laughs> I am Father Mark Mary. Welcome to the Poco a Poco Processing Group. <laughs> <laughs> here we, it would be nice to have Father PT here. Yeah. Because he, he has a lot of issues. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make sure he listens to it. He would have really spiced this thing up. Oh, wouldn't you? He would have brought some juicy stuff. Oh, come on. Look at you guys. Are we all. still doing that like fun fact thing again or what? You still got to, I mean, I, there was, so as the, if the listener listened to the last episode, listeners listened to the last episode, it went a different direction than maybe the notes <laughs> had said. And I how do you feel about that? Like in, in oh, real, was, in real time, are you like, oh gosh, we're totally getting away than what we thought? No, we no, no. Get. I was, I was like, so in it. I thought I, I'm like. I don't, I mean, I think it's helpful for the listeners. It's great for me to be a part of it. So certainly helpful for us. (laughs) Well, and it's like, we kind of went all formator. That was like a a little mini healing retreat. I'm actually kind of tired of hearing about your story. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. No, yeah, I was all about that. Luckily I'm healthy and I don't care what he thinks. It's funny. I didn't have any issues when I was younger. (laughs) That's right. That's why you can. Yeah. You made the all-star team. You were the quarterback of the, of the football team. Like. Hey, you, and this is also in sincerity, you, obviously that situation was very difficult for you, but you were, were an all state football player. I just like the, the, in, in, in reality, you were one of the best defensive ends in the state That's not your true. senior year. That's not true. Isn't that what all state defense? That's, That's what that means. <laughs> So I'm not saying that that shouldn't like redefine your experience of sports, but you were actually really good. Um, and I just want to want to tell you that. But at least you were you were it was like just one thing. You weren't, for example, like well rounded, like good at like musical theater as well. Oh, and you got you were the lead in every <laughs> musical. And you were in three musicals. You were the lead. What did it, what was I? I was kind of in the chorus. That means I was kind of in the background. They call that the ensemble. <laughs> they, they yeah, this guy doesn't really have any unique gifts in this area, so we're gonna put him in with everybody else. But if we paint you in green, you look like a tree. So. <laughs> Can you stand there? Can you stand there? So yeah. while that wasn't your perceived experience of reality, you still were the all, all defensive end in, in football and you were the lead in every musical. Just okay, throwing so that out but there. But here's the thing. What can get tricky about that? Exactly. And so I don't want, we don't need to, I don't know if we're going to dive in. I don't know if you Go need, we, But <laughs> what can get tricky about that is that's all coming from the place of, of performing, performing and achieving. Yeah. And so it starts early and then you're like, because again, if you're, if you have any capability or you're, Again, you're charming like, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but like you have personality, you have gifts, then you start to use those things to medicate the place of like, okay, I don't, I, again, I don't want to feel alone. I don't want to feel on the outside. So I'm going to prove I have a place. So then hence, that's why this is dangerous. Sports, musicals, being good at stuff, being a good friar, having like, oh, I'm going to be a CFR. Okay. And so you start, you just like, you do all these things and they're all good. And I don't think I was like, like egotistic, I didn't come across, across as egotistical no, no, no. or prideful or like self-focused, but deep down, I w- it w- what was fueling me was a, a deep insecurity in my heart, right? But I was the guy who was insecure and got the ensemble. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like think about that, like it just perpetuated this, like, yeah, I'm kind of ensemble kind of guy, <laughs> which in religious life, I'm okay with that. I'm kind of an ensemble guy. I'm a, team, I'm a team player, but he's not. You're Seriously. not. You're not. Seriously, an ensemble you guy. keep trying to make yourself an ensemble <laughs> bottom fork, top bottom four kind of guy. The bottom fork. Back to that. And I didn't even mean to start the episode that way, but the, the, that is that is a great. But point. it's probably better for you to have the insecurity and be in the ensemble because then you have, have to actually face it and wrestle with it. Because yeah. if you just keep yeah. being the all star or whatever, 
you can hide and run and it's just going to keep festering. And that's the gift of, I think the gift of all, we all have our own experiences of that. And then in, in a beautiful points in our life for deeper conversion and deeper healing, the Lord now has allowed us to be like, oh gosh, here I am now, whether, whether I'm the vocation director or whether I'm, I'm just a, a, a brother at the friary. Yeah. Um, it, I, I really do say this with a lot of sincerity. I, I want that not to matter. Because I, because it doesn't really the status doesn't really matter because the job doesn't matter because the responsibility doesn't matter because in a deeper place I, I want to be free in the Lord, and I want to I want to know my heart and I want want to experience the truth of who I am. So whether I have responsibility or don't have responsibility, or whether I have a prominent place in the fry or not, or whether I'm doing the dishes or I'm, I'm preaching mm-hmm. or whatever it might be, I this this deeper place of freedom and thank God all of us have experienced that so we can talk about it from oh gosh that's where I was self-reliant and achieving and performing, wanting people to validate me compared to um, just kind of the truth of of being a friar now and being free and not not having to put on a show and and then receiving the responsibilities and things like that and doing them freely rather than saying, oh gosh, this is who I am. Um, I think just to kind of, in case the list, by the way, just listen to the probably the last episode before you listen to this episode. <laughs> there was no transition. It's, it's almost like one episode. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we were just talking about Father Innocence a little in, I don't want to like rejection from the all-star <laughs> yeah, yeah. team, <laughs> but it, to be, like, I'm, I can't just say this is what we talked about last week. You actually, to may, you just have to listen to the last episode. Some of this will, this will make sense, but please listen to the last episode. Um, but this, yeah, this is exactly it though. And this is why it's dangerous, particularly in some like religious things, because it's like, you can be a seminarian and you can get great grades and you can be very sort of charismatic and you can, uh, look the part and you can be in the chapel and you can sing in the songs and you can still just be doing all of it from like a place of self-protection and hiding and you're pursuing this because it's the easier thing and it's just like and but this is what people are seeing this is what's visible this is what's getting graded this is what's being evaluated and so similarly just with other areas of mission again like you can have the huge bible study you can have all of this but but it's like why are you doing it like what's at that what's that at that place and that's where it is like it just it's it's i don't know if the word is sensitive it's just nuanced it's yeah. it's complex yep. mysterious maybe um so this this episode is brought to you by catholic psychology <laughs> if you'd like to join <laughs> that right that'd be a great group great uh great series for that type of thing if you want us to not talk about this because we're getting paid to do it <laughs> please go to spiritjuice.org forward slash poco poco we're trying to get 300 uh new subscribers in about three months so that um we're all set and we can just keep growing and expanding and not try and take care of our deficit other ways i think we're gonna do it i think i have t- i really total do confidence, right? our, our the listeners and the people of god are very generous and very kind sometimes people just need to be asked so consider it this is us asking you <laughs> yeah don't yeah actually it is just us asking you <laughs> there's not really a lot of uh nuance there <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah um it's not like when i would go to like the, at the ave maria go to the coffee place and be like oh hey what are you doing here father yeah just uh you know hanging out looking for some coffee get some coffee Oh, you, you, you want me to get it for you? Yeah. Okay. Sure. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, consider that me asking you for coffee. This is just like, Hey bro, (laughs) bro, I need it. I need some caffeine. Cool. Um, as promised, (laughs) I don't know what to do with this next in a future episode. I'll explain to you in detail about how I have a thing for praying for people who are (laughs) struggling. We're going to do that in the future. We can't do that now. No, because it has nothing to do with what we're talking about. All right, unless we just skip the whole transition part of the episode, <laughs> just go straight to it. But uh, so, so in the future, we'll talk about that. Okay, so what we're talking about again is um, a lot. To be honest, I think what we're talking about is really receiving the receiving like your childhood or your what's the word the child within. I don't know. How would you? Uh, the freedom to just be a child, to be yeah. a son, to be a daughter, what that really means. Like your deepest identity that might've been, that might've been kind of stolen or broken from the beginning yeah. or, or from when you're very young. I think, I think maybe you can almost root it in like this Matthew 11, come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, I will give you rest, right? Take my yoke upon you and learn <clears> from me <throat> for I'm meek and humble of heart. Like the, this work of, of allowing the Lord to take 
this yoke that maybe we've placed on our shoulders and that we've been carrying for our whole lives of self-protection, of self-fulfillment, of self-control, all of this sort of, or of control <laughs> um, from some sort of wound and authentically allowing the Lord to remove that. Which I think, you know, because it's like, you know, I think with like an animal or something like that, if it's the same yoke on your shoulders for 35 years, mm. probably it's going to be a painful process removing it, but it's got to be removed. And then for us to receive the yoke of authentic sonship, daughtership in the Lord, right? And here's yeah. another image too, that yeah. obviously God has a plan for our life, but the evil one has a plan for our life. So in the image of uh, Luke 10, Good Samaritan, like the, the, the Samaritan or the, the man on the side of the boat was robbed, right? So oftentimes we're robbed of our innocence and we're robbed of the gift of, of just wanting to be a son or daughter of God and being free uh, to, to be a son and to be a daughter. And so we're robbed by the Lord. Like again, the evil one's plan for our life is to get us to, to respond to our hurt in an unhealthy way, to get us to protect ourselves, to get us to rely on ourselves, to get us to do all these things again that are, it's a little deceptive, obviously significantly deceptive because, uh, oh gosh, he looks good. He looks is successful. He looks like he prays. He looks like all these things, but the evil one has just, just it continues to rob us of the gift of freedom, right? And so what we're going on here is like, okay, to remind ourselves again, actually God's plan for all of this rather than this kind of other mm -hmm. way, we other ways we find ourselves in. Yeah, and there's just the invitation to freedom that, that it probably is going to get worse before it gets better that once we start opening these places, it's going to be very scary because we're like, oh man, I don't want to go there. Or the last episode, we talked about that seminarian being hurt in a, in a relationship, falling in love and and then having this girl break his heart. He he set up, he, he just set up self, like a wall around his heart. Like, I don't want to experience that again, but we got to go back there and, and, and to let the Lord heal that place and let the, let the Lord come into the rejection and how you felt. And that's not going to be easy, right? And so we all have different experiences in, in our life where the Lord's like, yeah, I need, I want to come in there because I, I want to break down the walls and because you fear is ruling your life. Uh, and because you're afraid you're controlling everything. And so like your life is perfect and, mm -hmm. and everything on the end this is going to be seminary and mom, dad, like, you know, friar, whoever, like we respond because we don't, we're so afraid about like, what life could be like or or the pain that comes along with these these experiences and Jesus wants to open that place up. This doesn't happen overnight. This is a healing journey. We have to get used to um the day-to-day -day kind of just being with the Lord and the kind of the messiness of it all, being poor, your heart just kind of hurting, you know, like hey, like I'm just taking it a day at a time and and having supports in your life. I'm in Poshlancy, one of the guys recently is just going through the total right struggle, but it is painful. Mm. And so I've been checking in with him every day and he's like, it's kind of, if you've never kind of gone through this healing journey before, it's, it is hard and it's a lot, but, but, um, he wasn't also used to kind of like the, the, the care. <laughs> so every day, like last week, I've just been like checking in with them. Super simple. And he's like, father, like you're just, I just feel so much, so much cared for by you. And I'm like, yeah, I'd done this a few times. <laughs> right. So like the daily check, <clears throat> Hey bro, how's it going? I was like, you know, like, how's your prayer? Are you getting enough rest? And I'm like, can you just do something fun today? And we talked about that a couple episodes ago, like just some, some good old non non-spiritual consolation is going to be helpful for you during this time. Ice cream, cookies, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just good because and he he's doing he's doing great but it but it's realizing that when we start paying attention to your heart and the vulnerability i think what the father father's going to talk about it's just tender and you're like whoa i don't really like this and but we just keep it simple we keep praying um and i promise you it gets better mm. um but it's just not it's a journey it's not something that just kind of happens um so that's also just good to remind people of <clears throat> one of the to to start to kind of give some f shape and form to where we're going next. This, I was, I was going to share it uh, last episode in response to some things that Father Angela said, and then Father Innocent jumped in and took control, um, I'm, which I, I, I thought that, I mean, I loved, I usually, if there's an episode happening where I'm like mostly just sitting back, it's like, this is a good thing when you guys are just what's that called? What are you, what a guitar player, what are like, in, you're just like riffing off each other. You guys were just, you guys were in it. You were <laughs> in your funny. wheelhouse. But Father, Father Angelus was talking about, um, I'll just kind of put it like you, this, this whole thing of like, you can't serve two masters, right? You can either spend like your whole life making sure you're always the all star so that you're never alone again on the bench. You can spend your whole life doing that 
or but but if you're doing that you're not going to just be loved like because like if you're spending your whole life doing that and you're good at it and you're achieving it and that's like your thing you're not going to give the lord permission and others permission to come and actually just love you on the bench alone and to experience like oh this is okay like i'm loved here i'm healed here i'm good here right and so this is where it's like we, we really want to sort of um, almost in like this Ignatian, like we want to pick a side. Like, mm-hmm. okay, like what, like what, what's the right struggle here? Am I going to spend my life struggling to protect myself, control my life, all of this so that whatever that vow I made as a young kid doesn't happen again? Or am I going to do the work of giving the Lord space and time and freedom to go there and to love me there and to give me back sort of my identity as his son and daughter? And I, I, I do think like that's kind of what we have to decide. Like, which one are we going to choose? You know, are we going to keep running? Are we going to sort of be planted and rooted and allow the vulnerability and sort of the discomfort and all that to happen at the source of healing? Okay. Uh, Before responding to that, just the second thing with that, which again, because I do think that some listeners can be hearing and be like, oh, shoot, I've got this stuff. Like, and it's here and I can't make it go away. Like, do I panic? Am I busted? Am I broken? Is it all a sham? Is it fake? Like, no, no, no. Like, hold on, <laughs> hold on, you know? Because I do, I go to it a lot, especially in like a one-on-one situation with somebody is the the parable of the weeds and the wheat. Like someone goes out, right? He, he throws seeds everywhere. The weeds and the wheat start to grow. And they say like, do we go and pull out all the weeds right now? And says, no, like let them, let them grow. Because like, if you take out the weed, you might take out some of the wheat as well. So let them grow and then there will be a harvest time. It's just how it works, I think, on the journey is that there are some mixed motivations and there's health and there's some sickness and there's like authentic kind of holiness and there's some like self-protection and it does <clears throat> kind of grow together. And I think like like the Lord similarly is like, you know, we're going to we like we'll just give it, we'll give it some time and we'll work it out in due time. Yeah, I, I know Andrew are going to jump in here, but I appreciate that a lot because I had this experience recently um, because even with healing like I think the Lord, um, like I think we have like we we begin to have glorified wounds. Like the the wounds just don't go away, but Jesus makes them life giving. Right. And so like you're, like I have these funny funny experiences. Like I've been on this healing journey for a long time, and I, sometimes it frustrates me that like we ha- I had still have like insecure experiences, or I still feel like that like scared little boy. And I'm like Lord, like why like why does this happen? Like we've already talked about this, and it can be just some something simple as as kind of feeling like, you know, like a week ago was, I was, um, you know, just having some experience with some of the brothers here and I was tired and I was just, there had been a lot of stuff, tough stuff kind of going on community. And I was just kind of feeling like in a tough place. And one of the brothers said something to me that it that was hurtful. And I kind of immediately had the reaction of the like little boy, like, oh man, like you don't <clears throat> see me, you don't love me. And like, it just kind of, and, and it kind of, kind of, it just hit me kind of quick. And the beautiful thing is, is that, that, that there's still kind of a wound there and the, you know, but it was beautiful. Cause I went to pray like, Lord, you know, I'm just, I'm just little and I'm just poor. And this brother didn't mean that I'm just tired and there's a lot going on. And so like, it can just be what it is. Um, but recognizing that that's okay, that there's like weeds and weed and, and there's good days, there's bad days, even as you, even as you like kind of grow and, and heal, we're just, it keeps me humble. It keeps me poor. It keeps me needy before Jesus. So I can go to him and, and he can just like, Hey, listen, like, I love you. And you know who you are. And just look, and I'm like, Jesus, just look at me. Just look at me, Jesus. Right. And remind me. So it's beautiful. Like it, it's, I think it's always that case. There's always going to be the, the wounds, the glorified wounds. We get better. Um, but I just think a part of it is until we're in heaven, we're just going to feel, sometimes we're just going to feel the pain. Yeah. And that's okay. You know? Uh, to, to, uh, what you were saying, Father Mark Mary, it's, I, I don't know why I thought about this, but, uh, just being around our nieces and nephews, uh, you know, when we get to, um, yeah, like what, what, what's with the niece and nephew or then I'm thinking of a particular nephew right now, like, but what's with the, like, he doesn't like to lose. And so he just doesn't want to play like, well, I'm just not going to play. You know? <laughs> and it's beautiful to kind of see my, my, my sister and my brother-in-law navigate that because he cries and he doesn't like to lose and they're not playing fair. And you, you kind of create that thing. And then he was like, and then he kind of storms away. I'm like, well, I'm not just going to play. My sister is beautiful. Cause it's like, okay, you can take a break, but you have to go back and play. Cause that's what everybody else is doing. And that's what we're doing right now. So to get him back in the game, 
you know, and, and the idea of not losing is kind of a phase. It's this lasted for a while <laughs> 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 with this particular nephew and he's such a good kid, but I think all of us were like, we have been hurt and this is not going well and I'm continually rejected or so I'm just not going to play anymore. Right. We just make that decision. I'm just not going to play. It remind me of the gospel. You're going to have to, you, but like Jesus is like, I, you, you know, John the Baptist came and you accuse him of something. He, I, you know, you say I'm a drunkard and, and you, we played music for you and didn't sing and dance and all like them. And I don't know if this is too bold, but like the Pharisee and all of us would just want to be like, no, I'm not going to do it. Anymore. If you, if you, this is what you're proposing, I'm not going to do it kind mm -hmm. of thing. Right. And so, and they, why the, why it's funny. Cause our little nephew, he might not understand it, but why doesn't he like to lose? Why doesn't he like to play? Yeah, I mean it's hard. It's hard, and he doesn't yeah. like how he feels when it's yeah. when he when yeah. he loses, right? Yeah, and he's obviously when you're young and you just lack the perspective that this is get your game and it's fun. It's good to be together. There's other values at stake rather than winning, <laughs> right? Um, and so they're trying to teach him that. But it's that attitude that because of our pain, because of our weakness, because of the way it makes us feel, um, we make these decisions. And I just like the overarching thing is like, okay, well, I'm not going to play anymore. And then we feel we feel sad, and it adds to us because I because I don't want to be left out. And I don't want to be by myself. I just actually do want to play and I actually do want to be a part of something, but I make that decision and, and now I'm left alone, mm -hmm. you know? And so I just think that's fascinating because all, there's that part of us and all of us. Well, you know, I'm not going to play. Anymore. I'm just going to go and be by myself and then feel bad about it because I'm by myself. And somehow we, we blame others for, for that. And it's like, they call it, they don't um, <clears throat> remember Father Amir called that like am amputating. Yeah. Like when we come up against our weakness, like I'd, I'd rather like amputate that part of my heart or amputate that, that relationship. relationship because it's too hard. And so that's kind of like, like similar to this, um, you know, the, like the seminarian who falls in love. Like, I just like, I can't do that. It's like, so I'm going to amputate it and I don't want to look at that. I don't want to feel it instead of, instead of this other experience of trying to like lean into what the suffering is trying yeah. to teach us. And I experienced my woundedness and wounds hurt and wounds are nasty sometimes. And, and so, okay, instead of amputating the, the, the wound and the arm that, that has the wound and just not wanting to deal with it anymore, I have to face it and I have to look at it. And the, right, the infection, we've talked about this before, but the infection around the wound becomes all these things and all these symptoms and all these lies and all these judgments that have been made. And when the Lord helps us in those things, oh gosh, the wound can heal. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, wounds healing still is painful and still it's it, the, the, the evolution of healing, it still takes time. But when I look at all those things, rather than just kind of amputate and walk away, it's like, well, the amputation hurts too, you know? <laughs> right. And that, I do think this is again, like restoring your whole person because there are parts that we've probably, and, and sometimes they'll use the, like the imagery of like, like close and lock doors, you yep. know, and like, or I, I do think that cut, okay, this relationship's done. I think it's the type of thing to, to clarify in just in case somebody didn't listen to the last episode, the, the seminarian examples, like the seminarian who was a young man, whatever fell in love. And then he's like, that hurt. I'm never doing that again. And, and actually moves towards seminary at, at, from this place of self protection, protection and fear. And fear like, right. Cause I do think if you are like in a vocation in seminary and like, cause you said he just falls in love, the seminarian falls in love. Like, well, okay, well maybe in that situation, like you do need to cut that off because you're going yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, there, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Sorry, that, yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a whole backstory to that particular yeah, yeah. example. I'm with you. I'm with you. But just in case. Clarity is great. If you are a seminarian and you're falling in love and you experience the call, like you need to probably. Yeah, you need to have appropriate yeah, boundaries. That's, that's strong, yeah. appropriate yeah, boundaries. Yeah. Process that <laughs> for <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. So I want to talk about, what do I want to talk about? A couple of things. I do want to start looking at a remedy and then, you know, Father um, Angel's particular, if, if you mm -hmm. anything else you want to look at there. Well, we're, we're, we're hoping to talk about control as well. Self-protection, self-fulfillment. We could, I guess we talked about it a little bit last week. But, um, you know, I think a, a, a beautiful example in the scriptures of the invitation to giving up control, self-protection, self-fulfillment at the service of the gospel of following Jesus at freedom and healing and all of that has got to be the, the rich young man, right? Mm. Right. So, totally. so there's this rich young man who's kind of had success and he's amassed all of this sort of stuff. And perhaps, you know, it is from this, some sort of little child wound that he had, you know? And then the Lord says like, go sell all that you have, give it to the poor and come follow me. And, and right there, it, he he goes away sad and he doesn't do it. And um, he kind of chose like which master he was going to serve. And, and, and perhaps it was that of his esteem or his own pleasure or his own whatever it was. But 
the Lord was asking him to leave these things behind at the sake of his own holiness and his sanctification, but also his healing and receiving his identity, right? And what was, I think, the Lord inviting him to? And what is, I think, so if you will, like the good soil where some of this healing um, happens or this growth happens. And I'll, I'll invite you guys to add to it. I'm not saying this is uh, exhaustive, uh, but I think a great remedy for control, particularly like in a disordered control, um, is going to be commitment. Is commitment because mm-hmm. commitment, like you enter into a particular situation, a particular state, and um, for a period of time, and you just, it's like, I don't know what's going to happen, but the constant is I'm going to be here. And there mm-hmm. is a part of commitment of come following Jesus that I, of leaving things behind that I do think is part of, of the healing from a need uh, to control. And, and probably, uh, so the next one is, is somewhat related is community. I think community is an incredible source, uh, like a, just really great healing for also for control and self-protection. Right. Like if you're sharing your life with other people, Mm. it can be roommates, it can be in religious life, it can be family, it can be like with kids. Um, There's another whole person that you're sharing your life with. So you're going to give up some control, but also you're sharing your life with these people. And so there is like some of the self protection now is going to be kind of like you just can't do it. Right. And then um, I use this word and we can kind of look at it because I think we have examples for ourselves as well, but like dependence. Dependents help you give up control. They give up self-protection and they also give up self-fulfillment. Um, so I, so in a lot of ways, it's like <laughs> what we're saying is like the family or like a Christian experience of family or of committed community of like discipleship and following the Lord. This I think is like the great, the good soil that is going to cause all of this stuff to rub and you're going to feel it. But also this is where, um, this is where you come out of hiding, right? And this is where, um, you start to see yourself and allow the Lord to see you. And a lot of this kind of healing can happen. So again, so com- commitment, I'm really looking for, I, I'm really looking for commitment for community and then for some sort of like dependence. And that can be some other people who kind of like, yeah, some other people, like it, some people who kind of pull you out of yourself and uh, kind of help you not be too self-focused. So, so the, I love that. The only the only word I would just add as as maybe beneath sure. all those things, um, and we've talked about it before and mentioned it here and there. But the the reality is, at the end of the day, in in our hearts, we all just want to be loved, right? And to love and be loved. And this is the reality of of um, the Christian life. Um, and the challenge with sin is is that when we're not loved, we and, and because of our sinfulness, because of our weakness, because of our human nature, this is exactly where the self protection happens and the control. We take control. Um, because I, I, I experience something uh, that's different than being loved and received and known. And therefore, I have to go into this state now of protecting myself from pain and woundedness and sin and dis- uh, disrupted relationships, things like that. So the goal is love. And then that's, that's, then sin happened, right? And so, therefore, in love, what's the, the foundation of love is it really being vulnerable. Like there's a vulnerability. Um, yeah, like Adam and Eve were vulnerable with one another in the garden. They were vulnerable with God. They were completely transparent, completely open, um, not possessing, not taking control, not grasping. And then at some point that sin entered in and then what did they do? They literally took control. Therefore, the, it disrupted their vulnerability. They stopped trusting one another, right? So the <clears throat> vulnerability becomes the key um, to experiencing deeper relationships and deeper intimacy with God and with one another. So, but in our brokenness, though, we, we're not vulnerable because we want to we want to protect, and so therefore, in self protection and self reliance, I'm, I'm I'm closed off, and so there I'm not no longer vulnerable, right? And so, what what uh, commitment, community, and what was the third one? I, I, I use the word dependence. Dependence, and I love that. But to to be dependent on someone else, you have to be vulnerable. You have to open your heart. You have to show your heart. You have to be aware of your things. So you, you if I'm going to be dependent on Father Innocent as my superior, here's my heart. Here's my desires. Here's, I meant dependence, like people dependent on you, but that's also true. But being dependent, <laughs> yeah. I don't. So I don't. Oh, know people to, being dependent on you, okay, right? Got so it. I'm thinking of like having kids. It's like, oh, like we're you, really. But yeah, you get outside of yourself, yeah. and you have to be open to that, right? Yeah. Um, well, people no, make demands on you, right? And so you can't. You have to be. You can't be closed dr- off. It kind of draws you yeah. in, yeah, yeah, and anchors you in something real. It's like, that's the idea. I think dependence as well probably should 
go in here somewhere. But I know what you mean. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. But I think vulnerability underlies all of that. I'm open yeah. to what the Lord is doing. I'm open to relationships. I'm open to what, what God wants to happen in my life. And I'm open to being called on. I'm open to being uh, available, right? So when we're, when we're self-protective, we're not available to anyone. When we're self-protective, we don't really see what God is doing. I don't really trust anyone around me. And so this community thing is beautiful because it's like, when I'm vulnerable, I'm pulled into a space where I actually am in, in able to share my heart and love with someone else and be received by a family, by friends, by a community. Um, and so again, this protects me from... Um, yeah, being self-reliant and being closed in on myself. So I just think this is vital, guys, like being vulnerable. And what Jesus does, every part of Jesus's journey, when, when we can read the scriptures, when, and particularly on the cross, the cross was the most vulnerable place for Jesus, radically transparent, radically open to the Father so the Father could provide and allow him to, to, to be able to do what he, he was called to do. Right. So Jesus lived his whole life vulnerable to others, <clears throat> open to others. As Mother Teresa says, I, I want my I want to be like the Eucharist so my every piece of my life can be consumed by someone else. Mm-hmm. That's vulnerability. We when we don't do that, and we just we we stay intact and we stay whole and we stay self-protective and self-focused and self and everything's inward focused. And therefore, um, we can't receive anything that we desire. We can't receive the love and intimacy. That we desire. So I just think that's vital and I think that's underneath it all. And if 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 I'm having a good day and I'm vulnerable and open, I can receive love and I can receive grace. But if I'm having a tough day and I close off for myself and I'm not being vulnerable, it becomes an armor where I can't receive love and grace. Um, which again makes it very difficult to keep growing and keep maturing in the spiritual. And I mean, I think that's where like a hardened heart comes from. Is that it's very hard to experience healing from a hardened heart. But when it's open and vulnerable, um, and again, it, I don't have too much to add. I think it's just a, it's a great, I mean, these things are just a great remedy. Um, but like, are we like, this is where the freedom comes from where we can just little by little begin to be like, okay, like here's what's going on in my heart. Um, and we can begin to trust. And, and I think what the invitation is that we start to suffer differently, right? Because you're going to suffer, you're going to suffer, but, but we begin to suffer differently because it's not like we're just needy and like, Oh, we're vulnerable. And I just like, I'm kind of just like airing all my dirty laundry all the time. Right. But, but we begin to live in a deeper freedom and and in like a deeper identity anchored in the truth. And so like, okay, I just don't (laughs) have to live afraid. Okay. This, this hurts or this situation or this relationship, this hurts me, but I'm going to do this with the Lord. I'm going to do this in community. I'm going to do this just in kind of the poverty of it, of it all. And I'm going to, I'm going to just try to take a step in, right. Cause I think, I think there's just something about keeping it really simple and suffering differently, right. Cause it's not like it's just going to, like, it's the answer to like everything, like everything's just going to go away. There's going to be no suffering or, or pain. There's probably going to be more being completely well, that's open. That's kind of what I meant. Like yeah. it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. <laughs> but, but I think we'd be suffering. We'd be, we, we suffer differently when you meet people who have con- kind of, fought the battle of healing. Like there is just this different reality that it's not like they don't suffer. Things definitely aren't perfect, but there's just a freedom to like enter into the place. You're like, yeah, I know who I am. This is hard. And it's not, life's not all about me, but I, I can, I can, I can lay my life down even when it's, when it's hard. So I just think it, I mean, it, it, it this, these things are all, all the right move. Just a, sorry to interrupt again. Like the, um, the, the term commitment, and we've talked about this before, how does commitment save you from, from self-protection and self-focus? We, we are just naturally, and I think I've used this term before, we're, we're just good at escaping. We're like escape artists. And so the self-protective um, and self con- the guy who's in control of his life uh, just escapes from pain. He escapes from drama. He es- escapes from anything that's going to make him feel uncomfortable, right? And I've talked about this before, but we generally escape in one or two places. We escape to the past when things were great or things then I didn't feel things as much, or we escape... In, in fantasies. And so we live fantasy lives. And, and we, so, and fantasies can be lustful, but saying fantasies can also just be like, oh, I wonder what Jesus would be like if I was completely healed. And we kind of live in a whole different thing that's not reality, right? Grace and divine life come to us in reality, in the present, in the moment. And so when we're committed to something outside of ourselves, that it, it roots us in the moment. And again, Jesus using Jesus on the cross again, that was the, that was reality for him. He was committed to being in that moment and not escaping. Not escaping to the past, not escaping to the future, but redemption came in all of our lives at that moment where Jesus made a choice. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to be open and let the Father do his thing. Right. And so th- that's why I love commitment so much is because we can't escape anymore. I think that's part of the, the challenge is if we want to grow, if we want to heal, if we want to be mature, and if we want to grow in deeper intimacy with God and with others, we have to stop running. 
Mm-hmm. And we have to stop escaping and sp- pick your escape habit. Pick the way you escape. That That's fine. But we sh- we, sh- we really need to become gently and not, we don't need to be hard on ourselves, but gently aware of how we run. And then there's a real invitation to repent of that. Yeah, man, I run all the time and I escape all the time. And, and the challenge is, and again, it's this like we're our own worst enemies because all we want is grace. All we want is to heal, but we're, we're living in realities where that can't reach us. You know, and then that becomes difficult and I think people get discouraged. But the, the goal in this is to be vulnerable in the present, in the moment where grace can reach us. Can I just, I'm going to, speaking of the processing part of this, I'm going to throw something out there and I literally don't have an answer. So we're going to process together on, on the Poco Poco processing podcast. <laughs> um, so I, I just thought of this example, but if it'd be good to talk it out. So like when guys come into formation, um, sometimes I get, I get this, this experience. Um, gifted, high, kind of high intensity. Um, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm describing inch. <laughs> um, all of us probably. <laughs> when we yeah. Entered, yeah. Um, volunteers for everything. And when he sits and talks about his prayer, his prayer life is just very full. He'll sit before me and say something like this. So for the first 10 minutes, 10 minutes of my of my holy hour, I do this. In the second 10 minutes, I do this. And then I journal and like all these different things. Like, so it's pretty clear that he is absolutely like con- there, he has absolute control of a lot of things. And then thing, things start to come up. And uh, so for instance, like he, he's very big on the schedule. Okay. So what, what are we doing? He always asks you like a thousand things about the schedule. And then when the, the schedule goes off, like, Oh, I, well, I thought you said we we're going to do this. Yeah. Well, there's an X factor, bro. And this, this came up and this neighbor's at the door. So now we're late. And he's like, but, but like you said, but I thought we were going to have this. And, and so there's a, <laughs> there's an inflexible, inflexible, yeah, unflexible, yeah. inflexible. And in, in, there's an inflexibility to like enter life when he doesn't have control. It's schedule. It's everything. So I want to throw that out there because like, I have some thoughts on like what's going on, but what, when I think a lot of us like present that sometimes where life just has to be manageable and it has to be in control. And, and it's really, really difficult. And it really sends off some like significant shock waves when, when like you feel the instability of it all, especially when you're CFR living community, we have a general sense of our life, but like things happen all the time. And so therefore this young man is stressed out all the time because things aren't going the way he wants. What do you think about that rule boy? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, and that's where I'm like, yeah, I get that. Exactly. (laughs) I think this is all like there's there's a sense of safety and security in knowing what's happening and what's coming and if i know what's happening i can i can prepare myself i can uh whatever i can like pack ahead i can i can put together my little like internal emotional like suitcase and i'm gonna have all my tools i'm gonna have all of my stuff and i'm gonna know how to act everything's predictable and i'm gonna know how to prepare and i'm gonna and i'm gonna know what's gonna happen and it's like oh I don't have, I don't, well, I didn't, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I didn't prepare for this. Yeah, this yeah. Like, wasn't on the itinerary. I have like a Phillips head. I'm going to need like a flat head. Like what do I, don't, I'm not gonna be able to fix this or do this or what's going to happen. I, mean, I think that's 100% it. It's like, there's just probably deeply rooted self-protection that comes with control of the schedule and a predictability. And there's, uh, um, there is a security in sort of like the clarity and, and the continuity, but probably if again, but if it triggers you very deeply, then it's like okay, well, why why are you so wedded to security? Yeah, totally. I, That's so right, right on. I love that. And you re- introducing that word, I'm surprised we haven't talked about it yet because like there's a deep insecurity, um, and it and it and a need to be secure in in other things, right? right? But uh, along with vulnerability, like isn't that what we're, to be loved and, and and known and seen? Which which again, which is the goal is finding a deep security in who we are, a deep security in God and a deep security in the truth, right? And so not finding our security in God and putting our security in other things, this is the internal upheaval that happens, right? And so I I just love that word, but I just want to remind us that like, okay, when we're not secure in the Lord, we're not secure in the Father and we're not secure in the truth of who we are and we put security in other things, something minor goes off and and we kind of have this unraveling of, of things because the security is is something that almost becomes an idol a security in other things and not in the lord and so therefore in this deep insecurity is what it turns out to be then then it's like oh gosh we're we're victims to all sorts of things yeah stephen came to the door bro we're going to be running late because we're going to help him 
or Stephen wants to, we're, we're running late because Stephen loves to pray and he prays like five minutes. So like he doesn't pray quickly. Or there was a flight delay and now you have to go get your brother at midnight and now you're going to be tired and that could stress people out. Yeah. Right. But if, we're, if he finds their security in the Lord, which is again, the goal, but that's what we want to propose that the, the depth of this is deeper, deeper security in the Lord and the truth of who we are. Then it's like, oh gosh, okay. And then you, you see a brother who's been in it 15 years and he's like, bro, I'll go get him at midnight. There's just complete freedom. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and the brother loves his sleep too, mm-hmm. right? But there's just like, I got you, bro. Don't worry. And they're like, that's a very different. And again, we have mercy on the partial and so new. They, and they're they're grown and everybody's grown. And I mean, I'm not bringing up this example. I just think it's it's a good example because this is what happens early on. And the only thing I really add to this because this is what the fruit of this has been, is that particularly when I see in prayer, um, we're gonna have some episodes on 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 prayer coming up, or at least talking about dryness and prayer. But the um, they when this happens, control happens in prayer, you start asking, okay, so like, what was the Lord like when you were praying, you know, and you have your, your holy hour, like cut out like these things. But, and then the fact is they, but they really can't tell you because they're like, well, I just went on and I went, did this and I did this and I did this. And they're somehow, again, I'm not judging their prayer, but somehow they're disconnected because there's the control is like standing in the way. And then you're like, well, what happens if you would just sit like before the Lord for half an hour and just talk to him and just be with him. Like, Father, like, I'm afraid of that. But why are you afraid of that? Well, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, because you're not in control. Because you're giving control over to a real person who loves you, but you're, it's unpredictable. And and you it might be different from what you think. And again, even prayer, like you let him to let go and he's very afraid of that. Mm. Because like, uh, like, but well, you mean I just have to sit there and listen, but what if it doesn't work? And, and what if prayer doesn't work? And then that'll just make me discourage. Like, I'm like, bro, what I'm going to ask you to do is for the next two weeks, I'm going to ask you to sit in holy hour and, and for half an hour, I just want you to be with Jesus. And it's a bit, so it's just beautiful because it's, it's revealing the, this inner need we all have to to want to control things because I don't I don't want to be like it makes me afraid I don't the unpredictable all these things I I'm afraid of that and so I have my schedule I have the way I do my holy hour and it can just be nice and then I walk away well that was nice I, I meditated on the gospel and but you're like but you were you really like when you let go of all these things and that it crumbles then there's a, there's a realness and a vulnerability to to a real person. And it, I, I just think it's beautiful because mm. this is what we're talking about is letting it all crumble and then learning how to just be with, with the Lord or be with other people or beautiful. And it, to, to make like, a, I think a distinction and a movement with it, which I think is helpful is right. Like there is a value to consistency and to having a schedule and to dependability, right? Big, no question. Big value, no right? Big value. And so, so the person is not like unjustified or wrong when they're like, oh, when we say this is what we're going to do, I'm going to think that's what we're going to do. Yeah. And it, in religious life, we're big fans of that. That's how we live. But also <laughs> like in our own kind of communication or our schedule, it's always like basically how parents with little ones are going to do it. Like, okay, Here's the plan, unless <laughs> something happens. Which something happens cont- exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so that's that is actually part of it all, because it's not just like we don't like whatever, no holds bar. We're just gonna like go with the wind, be like these like oh, yeah. this like silly Franciscan who has nothing to do except for like eat chips and exactly. I don't know whatever, hang out at the front door. But but at the same time, what we have to like what we're talking about. So so to have some sort of like movement, like okay, that's annoying. Yeah, you know, okay, that makes sense. And okay, I'm gonna respond and try and remedy it. Cool. But it's when it's like it's like this disproportionate, deep like anger, resentment, frustration, anxiety. Then it's like, okay, like what's what's beneath that? What's there? But what you have to be able to do is this is make the movement of like what's going on inside of me. Because you can live like, okay, well, Father Innocent is not predictable and he's not keeping the schedule, and I'm mad at him and he should be doing it, and it's his fault. And or or whatever, you know, this person is is taking their time and they're eating and they're late and like it's they're just they're not thoughtful and they're whatever. But it's like, oh, okay, well, okay, now why to look at me like, okay, what what work can I do in myself? Like, why am I responding so strongly to this? What wound is getting triggered? What like how does the Lord want to speak into that? Why and and you know, and that is like the work of like, which is why we're doing a podcast on this, like to ask the question, like, okay. Why is consistency and clarity of a schedule and change of schedule so difficult for me? 
why can it ruin my entire day if mm. something goes up? Okay, well maybe it's because oh, is it control? Is it, okay? Why am I so in need of control? Like, because I'm let's, afraid. Let's yeah. Why am I afraid? What happened? Okay, Lord. Like, and then you can, I think, and maybe we can kind of towards the end of the episode go to like how to if you make this sort of journey and you kind of get back to this kind of initial moment, how you can like pray into it. We can kind of just maybe guide yeah, yeah, people absolutely. in that. Um, but but just it's just to make that movement. Okay, what is going on in me? Because I can't, I can't immediately fix you. But also, like, there's a part of life where things are just going to happen. Yeah. And again, if I'm getting radically sort of all of these things happening, it's like, okay, like, what's going, what's going on? And with you're me? just constantly frustrated. Like, right. my life is consistently frustrating to me because I, I'm constantly anxious. And I, I think that's why anxiety is so on the rise is because we just live this way and people aren't in touch with the deeper realities. And so Father Innocent might have weaknesses and he might be whatever, right. you know, but the challenge is, is that like, as, as the Lord lives in me, how am I supposed to respond to that? What, what does it mean to have mercy on my superior? What does it mean to accept? Oh gosh, like he's doing the best he can. What does it mean? Like, how do I want to act in that situation? And it's like, oh gosh, my resentfulness and my intense anger and my annoyance, my irritability in those kinds of situations where we kind of take it out on each other. Like, oh gosh that's blaming him and that's making it all about him rather than like, oh gosh, there's something going on inside of me, right? So no one's perfect around us, but how do we yeah. stop? to be like, okay, what's my part to play in here? And how do I want to respond to a superior who's doing the best he can? Right. And have mercy on him and have mercy on myself. It's just like, and that makes it, when these things are deeply rooted, it just, the the frustration is like an alarm and the irritability and the resentment. It's like, oh gosh, there's something going on here. And again, it's not an invitation to beat up myself and, and kind of take control of that. But if it's an invitation, I think what we're proposing here is just to to begin to just to be curious and and aware of how I'm feeling mm -hmm. and just to start to recognize things and not to fix myself and not to, to to like amputate these parts of my life, these cancerous things that are in me, but just to be aware. Just yeah. to, what, what would it mean just to be curious about how you act and how you feel and how you're aware of your heart throughout the day and then be able to bring that to a friend or a spiritual director to bring that someone you can, you can process with, right. you know? And I, to kind of, uh, we have about maybe 10 or so more minutes in the episode, why I think I feel this so strongly and um, and we can talk about it in a couple of ways. I've used this example and I think it's still helpful. And because Father Angelus, they talked about you being the like kitchen crew mask guy at yeah. Damascus. What does that mean? That was, uh, that was a simple reference to the idea that like the kitchen crew is the hidden crew and, and kind of behind the scenes crew and it was just good to be with them. Yeah. And it was just like, oh gosh, like... The, or you could be the priest out with a thousand other people right. and preaching there. But, right. you know, you have 20 people in the small chapel and they're, they're ones that are behind the scenes. And I, I, there was a lot less pressure there and it was just easy to be with them. Yeah. So but, I appreciate that. I mean, cause I'm definitely, and probably all are like, you know, there's like the old Titanic image of like, kind of like the, the like rich fancy people up top and then kind of like the messy wild people down below. And we're yeah. just kind of like those people, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but they also have a little bit more fun, but it's a little bit more raw, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, cause I, I think like at, at, at training, there's like two, sometimes there's two masses, like the, the all missionaries, really beautiful mass, beautiful music, all mm -hmm. that. And that's great to be there. Right. And, and it is beautiful. But my heart is most sort of at home with like the family mask. I love it. Where it's like, it's like, it's kind of like the survival mask because they have all of these little kids and it's like screaming and crying and saying inappropriate things and doing somersaults and all this sort of stuff. And for me, it's like, oh, I'm with these people who are like totally given, who are in this place of like, out of, I'm not in control of this. I'm, t I'm not, I'm not self-protective, but it's like, it's just kind of the beauty of Love it. the little messiness and the rawness. And it's like, and, and to use some of the image of um, kind of going back to the first thing that Father Innocent brought up last week is a good father, right? Like a good father is going to celebrate with their child when they make an all-star team and an honor roll. And as like a spiritual father, like I'm happy to celebrate Absolutely. these things with you. Absolutely. But, but to be honest, like my deepest desire and what moves my heart the most and what I really want to like journey into is to being with like my son who's on the side by himself and loving him there. Mm -hmm. And, and like that, that is, um, why I think I feel this so deeply, especially where there are like, just even in the spiritual different areas, like there's a lot of pressure to like. To execute and perform it's like okay great if you're doing all this stuff like i'll be there i'll celebrate with you but what i like i really want and i where i think the lord really wants to go is i just like but but can we also can we go can we go there mm -hmm. 
and can I love you there? And that's, and that's, I want people to give the Lord permission to go there, to stop hiding and stop running so that the Lord can, you know, approach them on the bench where they're sitting by themselves and to love them there and, and what, or whatever the equivalent is that people have. Like that's, that's where I want to go. Yeah. It's really beautiful. I mean, and that's the, that's the father's heart for us. Um, right. We just want to, we, he wants to come into all of those places. Um, I just, yeah, there's something that kind of like moves my heart is especially when there's just so many young people who are afraid. And like, I think fear is kind of something I'm experiencing, uh, like kind of just a lot more consistency and formation and, and even confessional or things like this is that people are so afraid that they're going to be rejected alone and no one like and forgotten. Um, and like, it just, so it's just, so it's like just really moving to me that, um, very few people have a lot of safe places just to come, to come just be themselves. And they're just afraid that they're going to be alone and isolated and rejected and never seen. Um, and, um, like, especially in formation here, like, like I believe that's a big part of what we do is just try to create a safe place where people can stop running and stop hiding and be themselves and to find priests. Like you think of the priests that live in our house, like a guy say consistently that it just like, when I sit with you guys, like it's just a safe place. And so then we can, we can be vulnerable. And, um, and, and, and guys like you don't have to be afraid. Like we love you and you, you can stop performing and, and you can stop grasping. And once you get guys to do that, it's just, this is the deepest desires of our hearts to be like, Hey, I see you. And you can just let it all go. And God's going to build you back up and heal you back to life and love you back to life. But it's just one of the greatest desires of our hearts, that, of, of our fatherly hearts, but also our, our, our sharing in the, in the heart of the father is to create a space where people can be safe to, um, to, 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 to not be afraid anymore and the fear can just subside and you can let yourself be loved. It's beautiful. Would you share, I think, I think father Angel's the guy for this is okay. Like I think, I think the listeners, okay. you like to do kind of a prayerful, like with the Lord examination of the life where mm -hmm. they're kind of mm -hmm. feeling the strong movements with the Lord kind of going to the root of those things, mm -hmm. how to pray with it. Like, could you just guide some, yeah, like, what, okay, now, like, what do I do with this? And you can, you certainly um, experience as well. I think it's important. And I think you'll agree with me, Father Innocent. I think it's important not to start with the past. Not to be like, I have all these wounded, these wounds, and I'm just going to go and jump in. I think God's in the present and your stuff's in the present too. Your, your drama and your, your challenges are in the present. So I think it's like being aware, again, everything's with Jesus is a healer. We're going to start with Jesus and the gift of the Holy Spirit that just allows us to ex experience what he wants for our life and wants for our healing. So he initiates. And so whenever we're going to pray about it, we just want to start in his presence and giving him permission to lead us wherever he wants. Now, it's it's helpful to start in the present because of just like the present, a, a lot of the say, like we talked about the symptoms in the present can lead us to the past. So the the nature of of our woundedness, um, like we we talked about, can start with symptoms of, oh gosh, I got angry. Oh gosh, I'm I'm insecure and sad because I because of this particular situation. Or um, I'm I am resentful and and angry towards this particular relationship in my life. Or I I'm really overly concerned about the world and I'm just anxious and depressed. You're like, oh gosh, we have some of these things. And then we, if the Lord brings something up, like what's what's just happening in my life right now, if the Lord brings something up, that's what we sit with. And and with Him, we start to to ask Him. Like it's always helpful. Like Lord, in in Your mercy and, and through the gift of the Holy Spirit, lead me to the root of this in my life. Why am I so afraid? Why, why am I angry at this particular person? Why do I feel the need to control everything? And the Lord kind of can lead us back into some of the roots in some of these places where we really desire deeper healing. Like, and again, around our wounds are these, is the infection and the infection becomes, it's always good if the Lord leads us to a particular memory or a particular experience in my life. And it's like, okay, what, what's going on here? What do I believe about myself in one. this place? What are the lies? Okay, so I have this particular difficult relationship in my past. Um, what I actually believed in going back to that seminary and he was in this relationship but then was hurt is that if I give myself again, um, I'm going to get hurt and that, or I'm not lovable or that no one would, would, would want me again, 
or no one would want to pursue me again. And so you start to think about the lies and then the lies, then you take to Jesus because Jesus, in, in, as soon as we recognize the lies, Jesus wants to propose the truth. Right. And so in, in recognizing that, like, I'll never be loved again, what does Jesus have to say about that? Lord, what do you want to say to me in this? And, and am I, am I not good enough? Am I not lovable? Like, Lord, what do you want to tell me in this? And, and you start to unpack these particular things. Um, truth begins to reign in, in the midst of, and the lies, they call them strongholds, but the strongholds of our wounds begin to be released when we can allow, um, again, what would they would call the anatomy of the wound to be uh, understood. What's the wound? What's the deep root of it? What's around it? What I start to believe about myself? What do I believe about others? Because I make when I when I make vows to myself, I also make judgments on other people. Also need to repent on, well, this person's never going to love me, or this person's not worthy of my love. This person hates me, this person. And that those things need to, to be released as well. And so again, some of those questions uh, that you just allow the Lord to lead you to, and you start to reclaim the truth. Um, I think I might've told you guys this already, but like we have physical things we do every day to get ready. We get up and we, we take a shower, we brush our teeth, we get ready for the day. We have like, a, we need to have a spiritual regimen every day for our lives. I need to get up and kneel next to my bed and I need to surrender my life and, and tell Jesus, Lord, I'm not going to take control today. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I give you any sort of self-protection that I'm going to want to use to protect myself. And Lord, I just want to claim with my cup of coffee in the morning before the kids get up the truth of my life. Lord, I am your daughter. I am lovable. I am good enough. And I am seen by you at every moment of the day. And my husband loves me. And I, you just need to claim the truth. Like those are very practical things because the lies have been so deep in us that now we just need to, and, and more, more of the truth combats the lies and it releases the lies of our life. And as soon as we're tempted to experience the lie throughout the day, we just need to go back to our list. One guy just recorded his own voice on his phone, um, just proclaiming the truth of his life. And he just plays that on the way to work. I think I mentioned that before. <laughs> just plays it over and over again on the way to work. And that's just his way. That's his spiritual regiment to get ready for the day. Isn't that great? Just love it. Is that helpful? That's great. The only thing I'd add to that is, um, is again, it's sister Miriam and she, if she, I don't think she listens, but I'm totally, I'm, I'm such a huge fan, but if I ever take her out of context, please, um, sister, let us know. (laughs) But, um, it's just my personal experience of walking with her and healing. Like, so it's, 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 yes, what do I believe about myself? So that's a question, but, but also kind of in these places of, of the past. And if the, as the Lord takes us to these wounds and it can, again, again, we kind of joke a little bit about like, okay, everybody has a little boy and a little girl that just hurt inside of them. Right. And it just, we joke about it because it, it, it usually resonates with people. They're like, when you start talking about healing, you're like, yeah, this, this memory when I was like, you know, you know, 10 years old. Right. Um, but but what's what's just very important um, behind every unholy desire, uh, unholy action or unholy desire is actually a holy desire, mm-hmm. right? So it's man. My life is manifesting in anxiety, and so then I lash out or or I cope, and so you know I use these things to cope or I struggle with chastity because I cope. But but behind all that is a really holy desire, and so what you have to start to do as you start to heal is when you when you get back to the place of of your heart. Where, where you were hurt, you need to ask this little boy or little girl, what do you want? Mm, love so it. like was when I was on the bench by myself, looking at this, 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 I, that, this like unholy icon that became my life that I don't belong out there. I don't have a place out there. What did I want? And, and from a deep place of emotion, when like sister was taking me through this, it was just, she's like, what did you want? I was like, sister, like, I just want to be on the team. Like, I want to have a place around the table. Like I want, I want to belong. I want people mm-hmm. to want me. Like I, I want to belong. And his sister's like, that's what, that's like the deepest desire of your heart. That's where the healing comes. When you get access to what you really desire. I don't want to live in control and to be perfect and to perform. Like it's so lonely. It's like a mask mm-hmm. and, and it's a facade and no one really knows you. Like, I don't want that. What I really want is I, 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 I just want to belong. I want to be seen. I want to be rejoiced in. I want to be beamed over by someone. I want someone to be proud of me. Right. And then you start like, okay, like that's amazing. Like that's where you start with the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, That's where you take it to the Lord. Like I just want someone to tell me they're proud of me. Like, I just want to say, Hey, listen, like someone to come and say, Hey, listen, sit by me. Like you, you're drawn into this place. And then you're like, yeah, I just, I just want to be loved. And then the healing comes because I can start living from that place. And I want to be loved in all the right ways. And I know what brings me love and I know what doesn't. Um, so it just, don't be afraid to ask that, that part of yourself that hurts. What do you want? 
And, and a lot that. of it is, again, ah, man, for, like I hear a lot in formation and in spiritual direction, like, Father, like, I just, like, I just want to be seen. Um, I, I just want to be held. Like, I just want someone to rejoice in me. I want tell, someone to tell me that I'm pretty, someone to tell me that I'm good looking. Like, and it's not, it's not these other, you know, fake things that just don't, or no, again, <laughs> all these things, yeah. how they, the, some can be good things, but deep down, it's just a, a deep desire to be loved um, and, and seen. That's great. That question is so important. So there, you kind of honed in on two questions. Do you remember what they were? What, how do you see me? There was the one where he said it and you were like, you're like, yeah, yeah, that's one. No, it the, the questions were like, what do I believe about myself? Yeah, what do yeah. I believe about myself? And then um, what do I want? And yeah, what, what do I, I really want. desire here? And what do I believe about myself is just like the lies I believe. The lies like, I believe it. that I'm alone and no one cares. And I'm going to be like, it's going to be like this for the rest of my life. And Jesus then proclaims truth into that lie and proclaims yeah. truth into those things. Great. Uh, whoever didn't pray last week, do you want to close this with prayer? I think. Yeah, right. bless us, bro. In the, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we love you and we praise you and just thank you for the opportunity to be safe and vulnerable in your presence. Thank you that what's ever happening in our hearts, whatever is happening in our lives, whatever is happening in our story, Lord, we can be safe and secure with you. As we experience the way you look at us, Lord, the way you delight in us, the way you long for us, we are are safe and secure to open our hearts more and more to you. Thank you, Jesus, that the gift of the cross and the gift of the, the grace of the of redemption it allows us just to remain open. We can remain more and more open just to the truth of who we are, what we deeply desire in you. Um, and we, we grow in confidence each day that you long to provide that for us, Lord. May our audience, Lord, today just experience a new confidence um, in being um, more vulnerable and open and, and not need, having the need to control or the need to protect themselves from you. Jesus, come with your grace through the gift of the Holy Spirit just to allow our hearts to yearn for you and to remain open to you and all you want to do in our life. And this, this will give us the healing, the intimacy, and, and the real grace, all the graces we need are to be faithful to you and become who, truly who you have called us to be. Pour that grace into our hearts this day, and always. We pray this, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen. 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 The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. But when we were first starting to record podcasts in general, about 120 episodes ago, I think one of the desires was that we just didn't want to be more noise. And I think we're, I think we're doing okay <laughs> right now. I feel really good about these two. So thanks, guys. Oh, thanks, yeah, Paul Martin. Thanks for being good. If you want to support the podcast, you can go to spiritjuice.org forward slash poco poco. We're trying to get those 300 new monthly donors. Thank you, everybody. Peace, y'all. Thanks. Thanks, Sister Miriam. And Dr. <laughs> Thanks Bob. for having us. Thanks Dr. for forming us. All right. God bless you. Peace. God bless. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love. That life is short. That all will be well.